This is a tale of a war of ideologies that left millions dead, the bloodstains of which remain to this day. A war that tested the resolve of so many soldiers and their families, who in spite of all the odds refused to give up. A battle was fought for over 20 years, and this is a tribute to the millions who perished. Our story begins in Vietnam. The French, a colonial power at the time, began its conquest of Vietnam in the mid-19th century. The Vietnamese were no strangers to invaders. They had fought hard battles in the past against the Chinese and now took up their machetes and knives in defiance of French rule. The French had superior firepower and soon had complete control over all of Vietnam. Those who resisted were either killed or sent into exile. Children who grew up during this time resented French rule and one such child was Ho Chi Minh. A fervent sense of nationalism coursing through his veins, he was dedicated to freeing his country from foreign domination. He was exiled in 1911 and during this time built strong ties with the Soviets and the Chinese. During the Second World War, France was captured by German forces and seizing the opportunity, Japan moved in to occupy Vietnam. Many Vietnamese saw this as a better option, but the Japanese hoarded grain, not leaving enough for the local population. Famine struck and food was scarce. Ho Chi Minh now sneaked back into Vietnam after more than three decades in exile and called out to the people to take back their food and free their country from foreign rule. Many joined his cause and the Viet Minh emerged. They ransacked storehouses in the dead of night, looting supplies, and their popularity grew. On the other side of the world, the Japanese attacked the United States at Pearl Harbor. The US, largely neutral up until now, were forced to join the war. They met with Ho Chi Minh to devise a plan to defeat the Japanese and began to arm the rebellion. In 1945, the US bombed the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the Japanese were on the verge of defeat. The Viet Minh used this opportunity to move in and take back their country before the French had a chance to re-establish themselves. Ho Chi Minh declared the Independent Democratic Republic of Vietnam before a crowd of 500,000 people in Hanoi. However, things were not going to be this simple. After the war, a global power struggle ensued. The Soviets and Americans, once allies, now began to eye each other with suspicion. Two diametrically opposed ideologies gripped the world, and a Cold War set in. The United States adopted a policy to contain the spread of communism across the world, viewing it as a threat to everything they stood for. France, a US ally, wanted its colony Vietnam back, and the United States provided aid, fearing that the communist Viet Minh would take over the country. And soon, after the fall of Vietnam, all of Southeast Asia would fall as well. The intervention was supported by a majority of Americans who at the time couldn't imagine that their government could ever be wrong. As the Viet Minh grew in strength, so did the scale of the American intervention. French rule, however, was short-lived. The political scenario changed in China when the communists seized power in the mainland. The new Chinese government along with Russia now agreed to provide weapons and training to the Viet Minh in their fight. Now equipped and their resolve strong, the Viet Minh forces handed the French a stunning military defeat and on 7th May 1954, the French Union garrison surrendered. Talks were held in Geneva to decide the future of Vietnam. It was decided that the country should be temporarily divided. French troops withdrew to the south and the Viet Minh moved to the north and its citizens were given 300 days to decide where they would like to live. During this time, thousands of Viet Minh secretly stayed back in the south. The division was to be temporary until free elections could be held. In the South, a US-backed anti-communist named DM established the Republic of Vietnam. The United States supported the regime, and American citizens flocked to the South, hoping to rebuild the nation economically and win the hearts of the Vietnamese people. The Army of South Vietnam, in short, Arvin, was given huge amounts of aid, and DM began to crack down strongly on anyone he feared to be communist. Thousands were imprisoned and hundreds killed without trial. In response, a revolutionary group was slowly forming in the South. Its main aim was to oust Diem and his foreign supporters. They were called the Viet Cong. In the North, the communists passed harsh land laws and cracked down against political opponents. Ho Chi Minh was concerned that after the South, the Americans would now look to attack the North as well. And so, the Viet Minh began sending supplies and arms to the Viet Cong through a network of routes originating in the north and passing through the dense forests of Laos and Cambodia, all the way to the south. The route was called the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Le Zuan, a communist ally of Ho Chi Minh, was now gaining power in the north. 
He took a more aggressive stand and wanted reunification at any cost. Violence against the DM regime went up. Across the world in Germany, the Berlin Wall was built by the communist Soviets, and US President John F Kennedy was under pressure to stop the spread of communism. Tanks, helicopters and barrettes were sent to South Vietnam in hopes of finally ending the struggle. The armed tribes unleashed chemical weapons and even accompanied the Avon into battle. Meanwhile, the Americans continued to believe that their government was meeting its goal of a stable anti-communist South Vietnam. Avon forces backed by the United States lost a major battle at Ha Bac, and around the same time Buddhists in South Vietnam began to protest against DM's rule. Things were getting out of hand. Monks began to set themselves ablaze in protest of DM's rule. and the united states now wanted change they backed a coup that overthrew dm and in turn plunged the south into political instability chaos and disarray millions of tons of bombs were sprayed along the ho chi minh trail in order to cut off supplies to the viet cong vietnamese volunteers mostly women worked tirelessly to keep the roads open and traffic moving the americans were fighting in a country they did not completely understand the number of troops being deployed kept on rising and the government passed on minimum information to the media as to why over time a so called credibility gap developed and americans began to question their government the anti war movement grew increasingly popular among the counter culture and drug culture in american society and its music songs of peace and love were being sung people began to question whether the us should withdraw completely from vietnam It was clear that the US was losing the war when President Richard Nixon began to withdraw troops in 1969. His plan was to build up the Avon so that they could take over the defense of South Vietnam. Now, with a reduction in US troops, the Avon faced numerous defeats. It became clear that without American air power, South Vietnam could not survive. The last remaining American ground troops were withdrawn by the end of March 1973. Once the US withdrew, The Viet Cong in the north mounted major offensives ultimately capturing Saigon. On 30th April 1975, the Viet Cong flag was raised atop Independence Palace in Saigon, ending a war in which millions lost their lives. <laughs>